Battle of the Gulf of St. Lawrence is um, uh, an, an event that happened between essentially 1942 and 1944. Uh, it occurred because the Germans had sent over some submarines, the U-boats, to uh, disturb the supply lines. So um, North America is supplying the Allied forces in all kinds of things. And a lot of these supplies are leaving from ports such as Montreal, Quebec City, and uh, using the St. Lawrence and the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Here we're, in, uh, we're standing in Cap Bonami, and uh, this is not very far from Cap des Rosiers. These are uh, places where uh, fishermen uh, saw uh, some submarines in action, uh, either when they were lifting their nets for bait that morning or when they were actually fishing during the day. And uh, the poor fishermen would be sometimes caught between a rock and a hard place, uh, witnessing some very traumatic events. Uh, fishing survivors from the water, plucking them from the water, bringing them back to shore to safety. Uh, lighthouse keepers would be uh, also involved in, in relaying information that they had either seen or heard from fishermen, uh, relaying that to local authorities so that they could act also. September 6th and 7th, a convoy left from Quebec City towards Sydney and it was uh, a convoy of eight merchant uh, ships plus some escorts and uh, the U-boats, there were two U-boats in action uh, in the, the Gulf and in the St. Lawrence at that time. So one of the U-boats was uh, waiting uh, in ambush on the north shore of the peninsula, of the Gaspé Peninsula, and was able to attack the convoy and uh, following that attack, two ships sank. So one was a, a, a merchant ship, the Aeus, a Greek ship, which went down uh, near the, the town of Capsha. Uh, another ship that was attacked later on that same night was the, uh, the raccoon. The, the raccoon was actually a refurbished yacht. Nobody saw the raccoon go down and, and the raccoon wreckage was never found again, which uh, remains a bit of a mystery as to uh, the actual events that, that went down that night, but uh, no survivors were, were found. Four weeks later, however, some debris had washed up on shores of Anacostia Island on the, the lower north shore, and a body had, was recovered also. The only body recovered from the raccoon it was that of uh, Sub-Lieutenant uh, McConnell. Uh, McConnell was a fellow who was born in Montreal and I think had trained um, uh, out west in Victoria, I believe. And he was the only body ever recovered from that, uh, from that shipwreck. So 24 years uh, old, old at the, the time of, the, uh, of the, 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 the sinking. Yeah, we don't have a, we haven't scanned his file yet, but his file is uh, his file is in this building. This is a typical storage uh, storage area, and this uh, particular shelving is all national defense material. So we have um, Russell McConnell's. Uh, file, military file with us here. So um, do you want to walk through it for us, Paul? This is a Navy file and um, the, the first thing you usually find in the file is the attestation paper, which indicates the beginning of military service. Now f for uh, McConnell here, we have, the f we have a, actually a militia f attestation form. So he joined in Montreal, joined up to the, uh, the non-permanent active militia. So he was drilling weekly with them at, from the age of 16, actually. Uh, from, from there, though, when the war breaks out, he fills out um, an attestation form to join the Royal Canadian Naval Volunteer Reserve. But then in um, uh, 12 May, he's posted to Royal Roads at, in uh, Victoria to, to Esquimalt. So that's, yes, that, yes. Was, of course, was the officer training, uh, tr training facility during the Second World War.
And so he's posted to Gaspé. And from Gaspé back to Stadacona, Stadacona back to uh, the training establishment. And then finally he, he's uh, uh, posted to the HMCS Raccoon. And it's the Raccoon uh, is the ship on which he was serving as a sub-lieutenant when he was, uh, the ship was uh, sunk in uh, September 19, uh, 1942. So as this is a killed in active service file, what you're going to find, of course, is information about his death, the notification of next of kin. So I'm sure if we leaf through here a little bit, uh, yeah, there we go, there's the telegram. So um, the Minister of National Defense for Naval Services deeply regrets to inform you that your husband, Sub-Lieutenant Russell Henry McConnell, and RCNVR is missing, believe lost at sea. So first telegraph sent um, in uh, mid-September, but of course he's missing. And um, and uh, so on 11, uh, 11 October 1942, three weeks later, they send the following. Um, have, have written to you today reporting body recovered shores of Anticosti Island. Undoubtedly your husband, Sub-Lieutenant R.H. McConnell, HMCS Raccoon. Body badly mutilated and decomposed, but your husband's name on uniform coat and cigarette lighter with his initials in pocket. General appearance of remains, I am satisfied, confirms it is your gallant husband's body. Owing to condition of remains, it was essential to carry out burial at sea, which was conducted with full naval honours. Your friend, Reverend Captain Perkins, who was on board, conducted ceremony, and he is writing you with full particulars and sending you copies of photographs of service at sea. Most bodies of most men in the, in the Royal Canadian Navy who were lost at sea, their bodies were never, rec never recovered. So she was lucky to have a lucky in the sense that she found out eventually um, his body was recovered, mm -hmm. but must have been quite a sh shock to receive that, uh, that, that telegram.